We have a bunch of driver announcements to talk about from NASCAR to IndyCar. Okay, I lied. Maybe it's not a bunch. It's four, but there's a huge one that came out on Tuesday because apparently Tuesday is just the day we now announce where drivers are going to be going or what they're going to be doing. So the biggest announcement comes from Legacy Motor Club regarding Eric Jones. So after Sunday's NASCAR Cup Series race at Talladega, he has suffered a spinal fracture and will be missing this weekend's upcoming race at Dover. Subbing in his place is NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series driver, Tricon Garage driver, Corey Heim. Corey Heim, of course, has six Truck Series wins. He should have won the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Championship last year if it wasn't for Carson Hosovar. And he is the Legacy Motor Club reserve driver. That was announced before the season. So he will be stepping into that number 43 card this weekend at Dover, which is maybe not the place you want to make your Cup Series debut. That is a pretty daunting track. But for Corey Heim, he does have a decent amount of experience. And a lot of people talk about how the truck races a lot like the cup car. Now, when we've seen Carson Hosovar make the switch and just kind of skip right over Xfinity with select starts and be rather successful so far. So for Eric Jones, it's a massive disappointment. Of course, you never want to be out having a spinal fracture, which he says is week to week at this point. So they'll be taken on a week to week basis. I imagine he'll likely be out for Kansas too. If it's anything of like what we've seen with Alex Bowman or Eric Almarola, it becomes a multi-week thing if not a month-long thing at this point so huge disappointment for Eric Jones obviously he got caught up in that wreck on Sunday at Talladega when the Toyotas were just trying to stay in line and a bad shove from the 42 car John Hunter Nemechek shoved the 23 car into the 43 car and then everything got hooked and Eric Jones went into the wall head-on very Dale Earnhardt style which was unfortunate but thankfully he you know got out and you know will be okay but Taking care of your back is massively important. Anybody that's ever had a back injury knows, like, it's not about just what's happening now. This is about the future as well, because there's not much you can do for a back. I mean, there is, but you're always going to be in some sort of discomfort. So making sure that he's fully healed to come back, that's the biggest thing right here. So Corey Heim will be making his NASCAR Cup Series debut this weekend at Dover. Jimmy Johnson, the team's co-owner, will also be racing this weekend at Dover. So at least he has you know, a guy to lean on there. Obviously, John Hunter Nemechek has Cup Series starts at Dover, but a guy like Jimmy Johnson, who's won here so many times, I can't even remember off the top of my head, I believe it is 10 times or 11 times. Uh, he has a lot of Miles the Monsters hanging around his house at this point. Corey Heim is going to be just okay. Like, he's going to be completely fine. He's a good race car driver. He'll be able to handle it. Other announcements that we had on Sat or Tuesday, not Saturday, this does pertain to people that race on Saturdays, though. That would be coming out of Tricon Garage, another Tricon Garage new driver in the news. Brett Moffitt, the 2018 Truck Series champion, will be making select starts for Tricon this year in the number one Toyota Tundra. Where are those races going to be at? Well, we know the first one will be next weekend at Kansas. Outside of that, uh, it remains to be seen. He has 13 Truck Series wins. The guy knows how to get to victory lane. He's won basically with every team he's been with, and he's burned the bridges of every team that he's basically been with as well. He won last year dr driving for Front Row Motorsports at Talladega. Maybe he can get it done again at Tricon, but it would be nice for him to maybe find a full-time ride and not just burn a bridge once again. But... Hey, Brett Moffitt continues to do what he does. Good race car driver. Just needs to work on those social skills a little bit more. Another driver announcement we had in the truck series came out of Spire Motorsport, where Connor Mozak will be making five starts for the team in the number seven truck this year. He moved over from the Toyota camp last year to the Chevy camp this year. I, I assume the checks continue to clear. Sorry for Connor Mozak there. But he has one oval win that came at... Uh, Kansas last year in the ARCA race driving I believe for Joe Gibbs racing at the time while he's great on road courses really good standout Trans Am driver when this kid gets on an oval at times he's like an unguided missile and you just hope that he doesn't lock on to you because chances are you're going to end up in the fence more often than not but the good news for the Spire boys in the body shop is you're probably going to have some work coming up at least in these five races at some point a lot like Chris Wright signing with Tricon where I was like hey guys Body shop, get ready. And then two weeks later, boom, first race, Rex. Body shop had to be ready. So Connor Mozak will be racing next weekend at Kansas. He'll also be racing at Charlotte in May, Pocono, Kansas again, as well as Homestead at the end of the year. Good landing spot for him. Hopefully, we know that's a race-winning truck. We know those are that is a race-winning team. That team has looked super stout this year. Kyle Busch has taken them to victory lane. Uh, Raja Karuth has taken them to victory lane. We'll have to wait and see what can happen there. 
And then on the IndyCar side of things, we have a driver announcement there as well. Theo Porsche, the F2 champion, the IndyCar rookie last weekend at the Grand Prix of Long Beach, will be back again at Barber Motorsport Park this weekend in Alabama, a place I'm sure he never thought he would end up at while growing up in France. Regardless, the kid looked really good on debut last year. Gained a bunch of spots, finished 11th. You know who also finished 11th in their IndyCar debut? Sebastian Bourdais. So what I'm saying is Theo Porcher, he is about to become a four-time IndyCar champion or champ car champion, whatever you want to say here. Regardless, the kid has a ton of skill. David Malukas is still recovering from his broken wrist. He gets the pins out this week on Wednesday, I believe is what the team said. He also flew down to Panama last week to get stem cells injected into the ligaments to try to help the healing process there and gain his strength back he will hopefully be able to return gavin ward the team principal did say at some point they might have to look about uh look past david malukas and what a future looks like without him it's unfortunate for malukas uh obviously he was kind of i think in a lot of people's opinion maybe a fringe guy for this mclaren seat maybe the best of the rest in terms of what was left from the free agency calm isla likely would have been the guy if you know hunkos hollinger had any bit of respect in their body and released him at a time where he could have, you know, signed with a decent team and, you know, found a full-time ride, but they don't. So as unfortunate for Callum, although he did sub for Malukas already this year as well. For Theo Porcher, is he going to be a full-time IndyCar guy? Probably not, at least not for the rest of this year and probably not for next year as well. Next year could be up in the air a little bit. He's currently racing full-time in Super Formula in Japan. He also has a contract with Sauber on the F1 side as a reserve driver. He's a Formula 2 champion like we've talked about. The guy can absolutely wheel a race car. It was great to see what he could do on debut at Long Beach. Really interested to see what he does at a... Uh, purpose-built circuit this weekend at Barber, which is a challenge in itself, that racetrack alone. So for him, it's great news. And for McLaren, they've got to test out two different drivers already this year, both in Calum Eilat as well as Theo Porcher, and maybe they can make a decision on who's going to be in that third car next year. Potentially, they could have two openings as well. Alexander Rossi, I believe, is in a contract year as well, and apparently Prema is after his services, according to, uh, I believe, Marshall Pruitt said that on his podcast last week. So either way, Tuesday turned out to be a pretty big day for driver announcements. Unfortunate for Eric Jones, like we said, I think one thing that might have to be explored with the Eric Jones situation going forward is obviously when he wrecked, he keyed up the mic and said his back hurt, his back hurt, and then he needed some help over to the car. They get him into the infield care center. He checks out the infield care center, comes out, does uh, his TV interview where he said, yeah, I'm just sore a little bit, then went back to the infield care center and then was transported to a local hospital and then was discharged, I believe, at 11.30 p.m. on Sunday night and flew home to North Carolina. How did he go from the infield care center clearing him to having to go back when he had a fractured spine? There seems to be some sort of disconnect there. And obviously, I know how, you know, the infield care center does tend to work. If the, you know, doctor asks the driver, hey, you have any pain? Are you fine? This and that. And the driver says, yeah, there's not much they can do there and like hold them. And then when he comes back, you know, but should nascar have some sort of policy where they're like hey if you go to the infield care center complaining about x y and z you have to get that x rate or something who knows at this point but it does feel like there was something missing in the chain of command there or the chain of sequences that should have probably prevented him from leaving and going out and doing his tv interview and then having to come back and you know have his back re-examined so um unfortunate situation there hopefully he's okay going forward hopefully he doesn't miss too many races but like i said Corey heim is a really solid stand-in i'm excited to see what he can do on his debut and especially at a time where legacy motor club is rumored to be looking for a third charter this could be a perfect audition for him potentially for next year if not 2026 so let me know what you think about all this in the comments like and subscribe to the channel follow me on tiktok at break hard instagram and twitter at break hard blog